Today, the government is expected to announce that the U.S. has dropped charges against an al-Qaeda suspect in the 2000 bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen. The move upholds President Obama's order to freeze military tribunals at Guantanamo Bay. Well, perfect timing then, because with us now, uh, we have the retired, for, the former commanding officer of the USS Cold, Commander Kirk Lippold, in our studio. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, you were the commanding officer of the USS Cold when the ship was attacked. Uh, it was attacked in the Yemeni port of Aden on October 12, 2000. I remember it so well, because actually my husband, who's an investigative reporter, was in a small boat uh, approaching Navy ships, showing the lack of security around them, <laughs> and I, this news broke on the morning. I knew he was out there somewhere, and it very much... Not a good day to yeah. be doing it then. What's your reaction to the news this morning, um, especially given uh, the controversy surrounding Guantanamo Bay? I'm actually very disappointed. Mm -hmm. I think that the administration, by doing this, we had a legal process in place with military commissions that would have allowed due process to be served against the detainees and now justice delayed is justice denied there's no due process in place and now we're just going to have to wait so uh, what are the what, what do you think the ramifications of um, the president's plans with Guantanamo and this latest uh, will ultimately be to our security. I mean, I think there's some extreme notions out there that these people are going to be running around set free and not tried. Is that the case? I don't think so. We don't know. There's well, no process in place right now. The president established a one-year timeline arbitrarily to close Guantanamo Bay, but he didn't put anything into place. He didn't say, here's the process we're going to use. Here are the procedures but, we're going to have in place. This is what we're going to do. But isn't that what that one year is about? To try and figure out exactly how to at least mm, Carp before well, the but, these but, You go ahead, Joe. But, well, no, no, but Commander, I mean, how do you feel this morning knowing that men that perpetrated a terrorist that perpetrated an attack on your ship are now free because of a presidential order that was that was made to fulfill a campaign promise to the extreme left how does that how does that make you feel personally personally as i said joe i am very disappointed that he has gone forward this but more importantly the impact that that decision has on the families who have waited over eight years for justice now it's going to be delayed again for hundred and twenty days or longer so this review panel can take a look at it there needs to be a lot more focus on exactly what we're going to do don't give me a deadline of one year and then say well we'll figure it out in the interim how about figuring out the process first, put the cart before the horse, lay out the procedures, articulate what you're going to do, how we're going to deal with them, where we're going to put them, who's going to be transferred, but, and then go on. But isn't that what should have been done in the first place? I mean, a lot of these people have been waiting a long time with absolutely no process. How now to blame the Obama administration for at least trying to create a process that is somewhat Saying there was no process in place isn't exactly accurate. Okay. Because there that? was a process in place where we went through, screened each of the detainees, and when we determined as a government that they no longer represented a threat to the United States mm -hmm. or they were no longer of intelligence value, then we worked with their governments where they came from, the countries they came from, to repatriate them back. That was an ongoing process. It was an interagency group between the State Department, Justice Department, and the Department of Defense. It was working. The reason why that process has gotten smaller and smaller is we've got rid of the majority of people that we could have. And the folks that are down there now are the hardcore Al-Qaeda and high-level Taliban that deserve to continue to be held down there and undergo due process, but with the military commission's process that we have in place and was legislatively voted in at the will of the people to provide these folks with due process to go forward. We want to bring in Pat Buchanan, who's also in Washington. Pat? Uh, Commander, um, the coal was almost, I believe, a decade ago, and this was an act of cold-blooded mass murder of American sailors on your ship. Why have these? I mean, why have these people not been brought to trial, mm -hmm. prosecuted, punished, whether with the death penalty or life in prison for an entire decade? Well, Pat, I think the reality is when you, when you look, we have tried to bring them to justice. As you know, sometimes it takes a long time to build all the evidence, put it together to make sure that you have a solid case against them. 
In some cases, countries like Yemen, who have had principal co-conspirators in this, a guy named al-Badawi, they tried him, he escaped, they caught him, he escaped again, they eventually caught him again. He is now, for the most part, loose on the streets of the capital in Sana, and proving that Yemen is neither a reliable nor trustworthy partner in the war on terrorism, and it's just unfortunate. The families see this. They have already been through enough anguish already, and to see this process held up even further is very difficult for them to deal with. And, and, and so, so this, morning, this morning, the parents of 17 dead sailors understand that we had the process that Mika asked you about, that process was fulfilled, there were charges against this guy, and now they're dropped again. So again, I, I, wonder, I, I, I wonder what President Obama says to the 17 families of these dead sailors. I, it seems to me, Commander, that there's very little that can be said. It only, it only prolongs the process. Well, Joe, I think what we're going to have to wait for is this afternoon, I will be attending the meeting as well with the President at the White House, and I'm very much looking forward to hear what he has to say. I want to see the President articulate what the way forward is with this. This is a national security issue because it's not just the charges against al Nashiri. It is going to affect the larger debate of how we're going to deal with the detainees down in Guantanamo. But what, I mean, is it fair to say, would, would you agree that the process potentially is flawed and can be improved? Our judicial system undergoes improvement every single day here in the United States. Of course the process might be improved, but you have to start somewhere and allow the due process to go forward. No system of justice anywhere in the world is perfect. What would have been the due process, though, if we've been waiting nine years? Well, well, I think you have to look at it in the total concept. Due process, in order to be done right, takes time. You have to make sure that you get the evidence. You have to make sure that you cross-check it. Because you've got to remember, this isn't some kid involved in a firefight that when it's over whips out an evidence bag so that we can go through the federal court system. We have to make sure that intelligence sources and methods are protected. We also need to make sure that we have what we need to under the military commission's process or however they get tried, that these detainees can be held accountable. Right, Commander, well. none of us can understand the frustration, the rage, the anger that the families, and specifically you, have endured over the years. This occurred during the Clinton administration, the attack on the coal. Uh, former FBI Director Louis Free was involved in a very frustrating period of time trying to get uh, people back from Yemen. But in the interim years, during the eight years of the Bush administration and now into the Obama administration, have you had a meeting with the families of the coal and other September 11th victims at the White House with either President Clinton or President Bush, or is this the first meeting? For me, it'll be the first meeting. The families of USS Cole met with, obviously, President Clinton following the attack. I believe it was on the 18th of October, right after the attack. Subsequently, a number of the wounded troops went up for a Veterans Day celebration in 2000. But since then, they have not had a meeting with the president to have it articulated what we are going to do as to what we're doing to track these guys down, how we're going to do it. Unfortunately, there was nothing done with respect to the coal until the war on terror started on 9-11. Yeah. And you know, from my perspective, the real war began on 10-12, not 9-11, because when you look at it, the attack on coal was the first strike by mm -hmm. al-Qaeda to try and eliminate the U.S.'s, the United States' capability to project power and defend our interests worldwide. Yeah. That's when the war truly started. Yeah, that, Cobar Towers, the whole thing right there. A absolutely. Yeah. And, and for these families. I mean, I'm, I've recently become associated with a group called Military Families United that truly represents the families of blue and gold star folks that are out there defending our freedom worldwide. Right. And it's, it's very important. Commander LaFold, thank you so much and good luck today oh, with your meeting with you. the President. I uh, would like to hear about that. And thanks for coming in the studio. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.